Good day, my friends. May God bless everyone who listens and participates in this program in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I asked a question. How can I have assurance? How can I have absolute assurance that God is with me? How? How can I have this assurance? What is the sign God gives me that he is with me? Do you know what it is, my friends? It is when I am following, serving him, when I am 100% with him. So, if I am sure that I am with him, it is because he is with me. If I am absolutely convinced that I walk with him, it is because he is with me. Of course, a person who lives in lies, in fornication, in theft, in corruption, in sin, in injustice, this person does not have assurance that God is with him. Or does he? No, he does not. Why does he not have? Because sin, sin generates doubt inside of us. When you, when I, or when we sin, immediately doubts come, fear comes, which is the most lethal weapon of doubt, which is fear. You see, for example, when Adam and Eve sinned, immediately they hid from God. Why? Because they were in sin. And sin produces doubt. And doubt produces death. Because when a person is in doubt, he does not have assurance of anything, obviously. And much less the presence of God. But when we have assurance that we are living a life according to the word of God, we also have assurance that God is with us. If I have assurance that I am walking according to the word of God, then I also have assurance that God is with me. So it's a give and take. That's it. Give and it shall be given back to you. So the more I give in or the more I surrender to God, the more he gives himself to me. That's how it is. And this was the experience Joshua had with God. When we spoke yesterday that God appeared to Joshua shortly after the death of Moses, God said to him, Moses, Moses, my servant, is dead. It's of no use for you to be there sitting down, mourning, lamenting. No. Arise. Arise now. Now. Be of good courage. And conquer the land I have promised to give you. So God has given us a promised land. This promised land, obviously, it represents everything God has, which is the best for us, which is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in the kingdom of God, when you enter the kingdom of God and you practice his righteousness, you reap the fruits of the kingdom of God. What is there in the kingdom of God? Sickness, misery, disgrace, poverty. No, in the kingdom of God, we have the best, the best of God. The fact that many people are living a religious life, although being Christian, but are living in misery, a disgraceful life, it is because certainly they have not yet entered the kingdom of God. 
Perhaps they have a foot in, but they have not entered. Why? Because when a person enters the kingdom of God, then all things are added. As the Lord Jesus said, all things are added or will be added. But in order to conquer the kingdom of God and his blessings, to conquer our promised land, let us follow the advice God gave to Joshua. Here is the verse. So God said to Joshua, Only be strong and very courageous. In other versions, it says be strong and courageous, very courageous. But here is this version. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to exercise, to obey, according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. So Moses received the law and he passed it to his people. Obviously, he passed it to Joshua. God has also transferred unto us his word, his law, which is his word. So then he says, my word, in other words, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. First, God told him to arise and put Moses aside, to put the feelings of friendship and of loss aside, to put it behind him and look forward. Now, God is not only telling him to look ahead, but he's telling him to neither turn to the right hand or to the left, not to the right nor to the left, that you may, with conscience, with knowledge, prosper wherever you go, which means the word of God guides us wherever we go. If we go to the city, the word of God will guide us how we should live in the city and flee from evil. If we go to the countryside, the word of God will instruct us how we need to behave in the country. One way or another, wherever you go, you need to behave according to the word of God. Not to live according to personal prophecies or private revelations. No, my friends, we do not need this. A Christian does not need to be listening to prophecies of prophets nor revelations of people who claim that they have more of the Holy Spirit, that they have talents, they claim to have gifts. No, the gift God gives us of prophecy is His Word. The prophecy is His Word. The prophecy is His Word. The revelation is in His Word. We always bring here revelations, but revelation of His Word, not revelation which I had to say to you or to speak to you according to my thought. No, it is according to the Word of God. So every time I read the Bible, every time I meditate upon the Word of God, I receive an instruction. I receive a revelation of that which I am reading, which in other occasions I had an understanding. In other moments, other times I had one understanding. Now I have another understanding. But all the understanding I have, I received from that verse, it works. It worked back then and it works today the same way. However, God 
opens, he expands our vision. So we cannot, nor should we give ears to any prophet or sorcerers of this world. No, we need to give ears to the word of God. And many people get married and divorced because of these revelations, because of these prophecies, prophecies of the devil. The person has the title of a prophet, the, pro the title of a prophet, pastor, missionary, title of a bishop, and he shares a prophecy with somebody which is a private prophecy. It disgraces this person's life. I even remember, I'll never forget. The bishop, the bishop of the church where I was born in faith, a very educated, a very spiritual man. He was truly of God, but he, he committed a great mistake, a grave mistake. He spoke to a very close relative of mine. He said to that young man, he said, look, young man. God is telling me that you will be a, a very wealthy man and you'll be able to help the church, build churches and help people with social work, with spiritual work, with the preaching of the gospel. And that young man, who was more or less my age back then, he became enthusiastic, he was excited, he was filled with joy, with faith. However, over 50 years went by, that bishop passed away, who gave that prophecy, he, the young man who was expecting the fulfillment of that prophecy, until today lives in misery. But where is the fulfillment of that prophecy? That prophecy was not from God. That bishop naturally committed a mistake. And error it was, as all of us commit mistakes. But moved by a feeling, an emotion, by some sort of affection. He shared a prophecy which by no means was fulfilled. And by the way, this bishop... He taught me to never believe in prophecies or revelations because God has already written it all in His Word. If God wants to speak to me through a prophecy, He will use His Word. He will not use a prophet. And then you say, but Bishop, what about the prophets? Is there no person as the gift of prophecy? The gift of prophecy is the gift of preaching the word of God. The person knows how to communicate the word of God. He receives from God knowledge in order to speak in the language of people of which they'll understand. Not the prophecy of divination. It's a conspiracy of many of many churches that they spread this around. I know many people who lost it all their salvation. They died. Why? Because they gave ears to prophets, to divinations of the gospel. Look, I served the Lord Jesus for 54 years, for 55 years rather. I preached the gospel for over 43 years. Never in my entire life did I receive any revelation or prophecy to speak to anyone. Or that anybody has spoken to me because I simply do not believe and I've never believed. And so I do not see myself as a defeated person failed no nonetheless god has blessed me god blessed and has been blessing me and the bless and blessed the works of my hands he has prospered the works of my hands throughout the world and i have never heard any prophecy i have never given ear to any prophecy nor any revelations even if a person comes and speaks to me and shares a prophecy even if it might be true i do not believe I do not lean upon the word of men. 
I do not lean upon the word of prophets and prophetesses or people who fortune tell, but I believe exclusively in the word of God. How many people hear me now with a destroyed life, completely destroyed? Why? Because apart from the word of God, they asked for a private, a personal prophecy. This is spiritist. This is pure spiritism uh, of the gospel. It has nothing, it is nothing biblical. Back then, God would speak through the prophets. It's true. God used the prophet, prophet Elijah, prophet Elisha, and many other prophets, prophet Samuel. But in those days, the word was not written down. The people did not have access to a written word. The word of God was not written yet. But later on, with the coming of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God being written freely for whoever wants to read, whoever wants to read, the Word of God is available throughout the world. The Holy Bible is the most sold book throughout the world. There is no book which sells beyond it. Why? Because its author is God Himself. And he ensures to spread his word, to stimulate his word through the Holy Spirit. So when a person has a sound mind, he bases, he founds his life upon the word of God, just as a doctor does it upon the word of medicine. He does not base his knowledge upon the books of law, of the laws or becoming an advocate. He does not found his knowledge upon the words or the reading of books of engineering. By no means. The doctor, in order for him to help people, he uses technical books of medicine. An engineer, in order to calculate and erect buildings, he uses technical books of engineering in order to exercise his career. So, my friends, if you want, you want to take possession of the kingdom of God and his righteousness and enjoy a dignified life, then you need to found your life, your mind, upon the word of God. Look what he says to Joshua. Only be strong. Be strong. And to be strong, my friend, is to focus your mind upon the Word of God because the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, speaks to us. So when the Holy Spirit speaks, it does not leave doubts. He leaves no doubt. Does God perhaps need a prophet to speak to you? Is the Bible not enough? Is his words not enough perhaps? And if he uses a prophet or prophetess to speak to us, then how will I act? How will I act? behave. Will I believe in his word or the word of the prophet? So then it already brings me doubt. So then I'm already divided. So then I still have to make a choice between his word and the word of the prophet or prophetess who prophesies. Did you get this, my friends? So be intelligent, my friend. Found your life, your faith upon the word of God. He says, only be strong, be strong. Do that which I am commanding you to do. Don't be there listening to A, B or C. Do not be there listening to the cheap talks of this world. No. How many people have suffered because of fake news? How many people have left and even died because of fake news? And how many people today share their testimony that really 
they were fooled away from their liberty, their deliverance because of fake news, false news. And when they came to the universal church of the kingdom of God, they changed their lives because they saw the truth, they heard the truth. Which truth? The truth from the word of God. So to be strong, to be strong is this, is for you to fix your feet, your mind upon the word of God. Any word, any word, you need to remain with the word of God. I'll tell you something, pay attention. I have preached the word throughout these years, praise be to God. If by any means, on any day in my life, if I, if I go nuts and go crazy and I start to speak in prophecy to you, do not believe, do not believe. It's because I'm going crazy. You can be sure of this. So, my friends, let us be intelligent. Let's be rational. Let us think the thoughts of God. Be strong to listen and obey my word and very courageous. Be courageous to assume your faith upon my word. You do not see, you do not touch me, you do not feel me, but you have my word and that's it. Do you need more than my word in order for you to found your life? No, you do not need this. And this is the reason why I have the assurance that I am with God. I am sure that God is with me because I am with Him. If I have this assurance that I am with Him, it's because He is with me. And then He says, be strong and very courageous that you may observe, you may be careful. You may act wisely to do according to all the law, his word, to all the law which my, my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go, which means the word will guide you wherever you go. And this has happened to me. So many people hate me. Many Christians, many prophets. You can verify all the testimonies of fake news. People usually say, oh, I hated the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Oh, Bishop Macedo, he, uh, I hated to even hear his voice. Yesterday, the lady said, look, he had such a sarcastic smile. It was so ironic. Which means, why do these people hate me? Because they were stuck by, they were being pressed, oppressed by demons. Because those who have the Spirit of God have the same Spirit I have. So they understand my language. And they love me. And they love me. But there are Christians who hate me. Do you know why? Because I am radically against these prophecies and prophets and prophets, prophetesses and divinations which have appeared and destroyed many, many lives. You who watch me now, you who hear me, perhaps you are one of these who are victims of these prophets. You married someone because the prophetess of your church said, hey, this is the man that God is telling you to marry. You married him or you married her. Your life became a disgrace. This relative of mine who received the prophecy over 50 years ago, expecting the bishop of my church said, Young man, you're going to be so rich, so wealthy. Until today, he is poor. He is poor. He is waiting, waiting for this prophecy. And he is more there than here. Because he's more or less my age. Until today, shame, he's expecting the fulfillment of this prophecy. Why? Because the prophecy was not from God, but it was from men. 
It was from men, not from God. It was a spirit, I don't know, an unclean spirit inspired that bishop and he said foolishness and shame. He's no longer a young man, but he's a senior. Oh, my friend, do you want to conquer? Do you want to be blessed? Then do not give ears to prophecies of anyone because a prophet or prophetess today does not cease from being a fortune teller. The difference is that the card reader, the palm reader rather, he reads the hand and the prophetess, she has a light, if you know what I mean. Who gives an advice to a person and look at the lives of many people. I doubt, I doubt that any prophetess or prophet has given a, prof a prophecy which has led someone to be happy. I doubt, I doubt. I'll let go of seizing, uh, uh, of preaching the gospel if this happens. I'll cease preaching the gospel. This is the reality. My friends, take care of your faith. The Apostle Paul said, do not limit your faith in the affections and feelings. Do not limit your faith in what you feel in, in friendships. Use your faith upon the word, especially, exclusively, better said, exclusively upon the word of God. Use the intelligent faith. This is what I call intelligent faith. Intelligent faith is the faith which wisely a person takes decision upon the word of God, not upon the word of men.